Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me on Their Fight Story. I have Kylie O'Hearn with us. How are you doing today? Doing good, good. How was um, this whole COVID and your training coming along? Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, stuff around the house. I actually just picked up my training mm, a couple weeks back. I was doing little things here and there, but I tried to really get into the gym this week. And the gyms are all closed because of the heat, so that was kind of a bummer. But I worked with uh, Rebello, Greg Rebello, yesterday up at Manfredo's gym. That was good. Um, and today I went to my coach's house, uh, Loco Lobo, mm -hmm. and we did some rolling around. But that's basically all it's been, just low-key stuff. Okay. How did you get into MMA? Uh, I got into MMA when I was 12. I wanted to originally do boxing. Uh, but... They don't hold boxing competitions for 12-year-olds. So I ended up doing jujitsu, and I loved it. And I don't know. I just always wanted to – I grew up with boys. So I always – when I saw cage fighting, I was like, wow, that has everything. So, yeah. yeah. And, then, you know, people have signature names, and you just have this signature, <laughs> this signature entrance or signature you, I guess. Where did you come up with that? I don't know. I kind of, like – after class, after training, we would always take photos. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I kind of just got, like, in the, like, I was like, we're here to train. Why are we taking pictures after? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not like that anymore. I understand now it's, like, promoting it. So I would always put my hair in front of my face. And I don't know. It just kind of comes natural to me. I love putting on a show no matter, like, when I'm in my world, I love to put on a show. Yeah. yeah, and you always do when you're in there. It's always like, whoa, what's going to happen? Yeah. Um, so it's <laughs> awesome. It's awesome to see that you work really hard and you train really hard and you're able to you demonstrate it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, how, did you, how did you feel um, fighting these last couple fights as a pro? Oh, my first couple, I was, uh, I was very... After I had my first pro fight, I kind of just got... I got, like, super... I, I got super depressed because I didn't have my license. I didn't have anything, like, I had everything going for me, but I just wasn't clicking with the motions. Okay. So I ended up saying, yeah, I'll take a fight at 145 against the number one fighter in New England. And uh, I could have done so much better. That training camp was so bad. I actually, I've never experienced panic attacks, but I had, like, a full-blown panic attack. And training, I never really talked about this because I don't like admitting this, but I had a full-blown training attack while I was training, while I was being coached. I was, like, hyperventilating, and I didn't understand why. Mm -hmm. I just, too much was happening. And I've never, I mean, that's, that's not me. Like, I'm able to be competitive on my own. I was just way too in my head. Um, but it definitely got better as the time went on. I, I felt like I was, there was too much spotlight on me, mm -hmm. you know. It just got a little too much so I ended up stepping back just a little bit and saying what am I doing I need to do this I need to do that you know I told myself that I know what's going to be best for me and I know where I need to go and be and that's definitely been helping a lot and I can't wait till this is like over or like I get a fight coming up or something. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, Cage Titans does something like underground. I don't know. <laughs> I just want I'll, I'll I'll fight for free. I just want to get some fights on my record. Because <laughs> right now I'm one and two, and I don't like I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah, that's not me. No. <laughs> what do you know? What what um other than being in the spotlight, what triggered your panic attacks? Um, I have no. It wasn't being in the spotlight. It was more like when you go to train. You're training, like, everything just happens naturally. Yeah. Because like, you're, like, when I'm, like, naturally being an animal, like, I'm good at that. It was, like, I wasn't able to get that. I wasn't able to get to just, like, do my own thing. Every time I would go and train, it was very, like, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that, this, that, this, that. And it was just, like, right arm, left arm. I was just, like, oh, like, I couldn't do it anymore. I was, like, if I'm going to be, like, oh, it. But I've, like, learned to, like let that go a little bit more and like listen obviously but it was just because it was non-stop and 
I just needed to do, I wasn't doing my own thing and I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. I was kind of just going to the gym and listening to the coaches like day after day after day. And it was very, I don't know. It just wasn't good. It was bad. My cardio was bad. I was bumming. <laughs> did um, anything change as far as like your, the people who trained you? Did somebody new come in and, or was it just the pressure that you were just going to be going pro? Um, I started working with more coaches and I think I was just very overstimulated and I wasn't used okay. to it. Uh, and it was just like, I didn't want that fight because I didn't have my license and I knew my training camp was shit because I wasn't getting to the gyms that I need to be getting to, to work. And it was just a very like tumble we process. Yeah kept spiraling out so I had to like take a step back I actually took uh two months off to get my license um which was I ended up going to driving school that was fun but <laughs> yeah I was I was like the oldest one in there I was like oh my god <laughs> it was funny I didn't get my license so I was 20 21 because my coach would drive me everywhere my coach was at the gym that I was going to yeah. and I would meet him on his way so it was always like just so easy I was like I don't have time to get my license I'm gonna just keep going and going and going yeah. and it kind of just backfired on me for sure <laughs> well, that's okay now you know now there's nobody who's gonna be stopping you exactly. um your last fight with Jasmine how that was an intense fight first of all that was like go 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 like that was awesome. Oh, you guys were like bending this way, that way. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, that was fun. I love that fight. I love her. She's awesome. She's yeah. like one of my favorite people that I fought. Her and Trisha. Trisha was really cool too. Trisha yeah. Cicero. Um, it was, uh, I took that fight two weeks notice. I had a bit of a weight cut. You know, I had to like really like count back on my food. My diet's really good. Usually I don't call it diet, you know. It's a lifestyle, blah blah, whatever. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but um, that was that was an awesome fight. I lost uh, from two takedowns, two takedowns. But it was really cool. She said I was her toughest fight, which was awesome after the fight. And uh, yeah. I told her where to get lobster, so she was really cool. <laughs> well, that was a great. That was a really great fight. I mean. Wow, I didn't know which way you guys were going. I was like, and it was it's hard because I'm trying to take the pictures, but I'm also trying to enjoy the fight. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm trying to do this. So I got to like prepare myself to what move you guys might, you know, might go into so I can get the shot. But I was just like, oh, crap. Like, I really <laughs> want to enjoy this. That's um, awesome. I love hearing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was my favorite fight. My stand up. I thought my stand, I watched the, I watched the, obviously I watched the fight afterwards. I thought my stand up looked way better than it did, but it felt better, but I watched it. I was like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. But you're going to say that after every fight, but yeah, yeah. I yeah. loved my stand up in that fight. No, I mean, you guys did great. Other than in that fight, your stand up, did you, did you wish you change, you could change anything in your other fights? Um, Are you changing your style at all or, you know what I mean? My punches are very powerful, yeah. but I don't sit down on my punches. And, like, all, like, the photos, I'm sure, <laughs> like, that you take, my feet are off the ground, and I'm, like, this in them. I'm just off balance. If I sit on my punches, I'll have a lot more power. My first fight ever, I trained, my first couple of fights, I should say, I trained with um, boxing gloves. And in boxing gloves, you know, your hands are like this. They're yeah. not fully closed like mm -hmm. MMA gloves. So I would get in the, I would get in the cage, and I would punch like this with my hand open yeah. throughout the whole fight. <laughs> I was like, I'm supposed to close my hand, and I would also, I would, punch them, <laughs> I, I would head hunt. I still head hunt. I don't mean to, but I do. I, I would punch them in the forehead. I wouldn't aim for the jaw or the yeah. chin. I would be punching them in the forehead the whole time. So it was very, it was very bad. Um, but I, that's I've learned a lot from that. I, so I would have closed my hands in my last couple of fights <laughs> and punched them in the jaw instead of the forehead for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. But I mean, that's a great thing that you can always go back. Even little things like that. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, it's like um, I mean, those are the things that you're gonna be. Um, kind of adjusting mm -hmm. but people don't know what else you're doing behind closed doors which 
when you go back into the cage, it's just going to be another tremendous version of you, which is yeah. great, you know? I I ended up after me and Jasmine fought, because I lost those two takedowns, I ended up just doing wrestling season as much as I could yeah. uh, for the three months at high school. I go right to the high school with uh, Coach LaRanger, and uh, I work with all the boys in there. And just the energy in there yeah. is just... I love it. You, ugh, that energy is not like an MMA gym. It's just hard, hard mm-hmm. wrestling nonstop. Like, cause like, cause an MMA, you know, these professionals, they're doing their shit outside of the gym. They're doing all their training that they're supposed to be doing and wrestling. Like the coaches are yelling at you cause he knows those kids aren't doing what they're yeah. supposed to be doing outside. Of the, so like they kick your ass in there. So it's so, I love it. I love it. <laughs> have you stayed consistently with the same coaches throughout your career or have you gone recently when I got my license I started uh working with Pete Jeffries at Triforce and okay. uh Joe Lozon at Lozon's and um Rebello. he's mm-hmm. not he's always been in the picture but I've never really worked with him as much as I am now right now my two main coaches is Rebello and Loco okay uh, but uh, my roots of jiu-jitsu come from uh, Giuliano Catino, Banana. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm in good terms with all my coaches, yeah. yeah. I always go back to them. Because yeah. it's, like, it's like I'll be here for a little bit, then I got to go here, then I got to go here. And then I, gotta, like, I know I try to keep it level, but my, my stand-up is definitely not as good as my wrestling and jiu-jitsu. And I really haven't been able to showcase that in the cage as much. I get... Uh, I don't feel like I get too aggressive and hyper. I definitely do feel like I take my time, but then I watch those tapes and I'm like, I should have stayed here a little bit longer. I should have done this. I should have done that. My uh, Carrie Kennison fight towards the very end of the fight, I have perfected like getting the choke. Yeah. The very, very end of me and Carrie's fight, I'm on her back for like a good minute, two minutes. I forget how it was a long time. If I had known then what I know now, I would have finished that fight. Yeah. But, yeah, that was that was a good fight, too. To the cage. Are you looking to, as people say, put on a show, or are you looking to finish? Um, When I go in there looking to finish, the outcome is not good. You know, if I'm looking to finish, I am not looking to do the full 100%, you know. I'm looking to go in there for... 25 minutes, however long I need to be in there for and dominate the whole time. Oh and in doing that, in preparing myself like that, I'll get finishes, you know? Okay. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. When are you hoping to to fight again? <laughs> <It opens. laughs> I just started getting back into it now. I'm definitely out of shape. I, I got up, I can get up. I got up to 170. <laughs> I get up there. I get up there. Right now, <laughs> I'm alone. like 155, 160. But if I, I would be, if if, if the, everything open right now, uh, I could definitely look forward to fighting in a month, uh, two months, probably two months, just because mm-hmm. I like to have all that time that I need to get ready. Yeah. I would love, this is like off topic, I would love to go to Russia to train, to just stay there and train. I would love it. I feel like the energy over there is just so like, no bullshit. And yeah. You just go, 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 you know? But I don't know that. But like what I see, I like. Yeah. Like the wrestling over there. I love wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that would be awesome. Yeah, it would. That would definitely be awesome. Where do you want to go with um, with your career? What is it that you want? To the top. To the top. The top. Yeah. Like, just the name. You know? Yeah. You're going to do your signature? Your your signature? Um, what the heck is it exactly even called? Right. Like, because I think of you and that's the only thing that comes into my mind. Like... Is the grudge? I don't know. It looks like the grudge, but it's not the grudge. <laughs> I just kind of do it. It just happens. <laughs> it's more like, 
it's almost it's also a thing like i don't want i want to be known more for like what i do not for my face oh, okay that's oh yeah yeah it, that definitely came into play through that whole process yeah <laughs> were well, you planning to get shirts like that design yeah. Are you planning to get shirts designed that way? My shirts, my shirt, my I got one set of shirts made, and um, they were that that was the design. Oh really? Sorry, my, mom's, my mom's texting me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. But yeah, that was it. Was it was uh it was red? I don't know where it is. Otherwise, I would grab it right now. Yeah. But it was red, red with hands coming out like this, and like the hairs in the front, and uh, I'm in crisscross position, and it says it says red rum across the shirt. So it says murder That's when you look in the mirror. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow, look at you, Miss Fancy I, over I here. Need to, I need to make new shirts. I do. I was going to for this fight coming up, but it just never. I was gonna fight June, and then Corona happened. So. Oh yeah. What are you working on um, during this time, like a mental or a physical um, training? Definitely both. Definitely. I always, um, it's funny when I was a kid, you know, I didn't have fights. Yeah. But, like my mentality was just so strong. Like no one could tap me out. No one could do this. That like 300 pound man. No, I can beat him up. Like that's the mentality. When you go in the cage, if you like, if you listen to too many people, like it definitely it fucks with your mentality, you know. And people be like, "You need to, you need to get your mental back on track. You need to do this. You need to do that." Like, no, it's like, no, I don't. Like, it's all there. You need to, you need to stop telling me to do all that. <laughs> here. Just, just work with me, and I'll, I'll be, I'll be one hundred percent for you. It's yeah. like, I don't like if I could go to practice without talking, like even like learning moves. If people would like just grunt, yeah. <laughs> teaching the moves, I would understand it so much better, so much faster, like, so much time would be cut down, that's wasted, Yeah. and we'd have all that extra time to be, like, going up, 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 that's also kind of why I want to go to Russia, because I'm not going to understand it, anybody, <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me, I definitely, I get over that, I do get over it, I just, I'm, I am respectful, I do sit there, and I do listen, and they obviously know what they're talking about, more than what I know, so I'm not, I'm not being disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I've noticed that a lot of people, everybody's different. Everybody has their own style of, of learning. And unfortunately, people take it as being disrespectful because you, you say something or you don't say something. So it's kind of like, ah, what am I supposed to do? What is your, your, what is your goal after all this? Like, what do you want to do after you're done? with this i had some plans but like they actually recently changed uh i have been like watching a lot of like youtube videos you know that just okay. pop up <laughs> this is, I, I don't like a lot of people don't like hearing about this subject because like you know i know i changed the channel about like the overpopulation of dogs and animals mm -hmm. like it's very like especially china where they like eat the dog it's it's a lot of people are like like that's fucked up how dare you even eat a dog blah blah, blah. but like we eat cows and stuff like i understand i un it's sad but i understand um my mom is like distracting me i'm sorry she's getting okay? back i don't know why <laughs> um if they're gonna like eat the dog, kill it humanely, you know, they are they beat the dogs before they kill it because they think, um, oh, God. yeah, it's really messed up. And I've been like really, really, really just very into that. Like it's very, it's like taking me over. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> yeah, I wish it hasn't, but it's like there's a lot of people that just don't. There's a lot of people that do do everything but like with the whole like black lives matter and the coronavirus like you th i feel like they should also be striking about you know dogs and stuff too because that's where the coronavirus came from in china and they have this festival where it's like a 10-day 
Yule and Dog Beat Festival, and they'll, like, slaughter dogs for 10 days. Oh. Yeah. And so, like, say there's a dog, and someone wants dog meat. They'll chop the dog's leg off and cook the meat while the dog oh. is sitting there. There's all types of different things they'll do to, like, it's just messed up. Like, kill it quickly. Don't let it suffer. Like, the population of dogs is ridiculous. There is, like, 900 million dogs on planet Earth. Like, stop breeding them. Like, and it's, like, you can't control it. But, yeah. like, there's also just, like, a lot of idiots that have dogs that shouldn't <laughs> have dogs. Also, another thing, I get really mad when people <laughs> blast their music in the car with their dog. It's, like, turn it down, just play it regular, not blasting, like, your dog's really sensitive. Like, I saw, like, a crazy animal lover. Like, I used to just kind of, like, let this stuff go, but it always has honestly bugged me. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't want to hear about it. But it's, like, if you have no fucking common sense, like, okay, you should have a dog, but, like, you should know how to take care of it. Mm -hmm. like, then there's this whole thing where we shouldn't even own dogs and da 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 um, Which kind of makes sense, but it's also, like, sad. I don't know. I don't know. It's, like, a big thing. Yeah. It's no, same, but... same with cows, though. Same with any animal, like you're gonna kill it kill it quickly humanely you know be thankful for that meat don't sit there and just that's 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 alive you know what are you doing that ha that's suffering kill it Ugh, yeah i rather i'd rather not kill it at all i wouldn't kill it i wouldn't be able to kill it like i love chicken <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't kill a chicken to eat the chicken i wouldn't yeah. be able to <laughs> yeah no i, mean, I, I have to get through it somehow eventually but we shouldn't even be eating meat the meat is I think it's, I forget the exact number, I think it's like 60 or 70% edible, but insects, it's gross. It's like 90%, 99% edible. Uh, I yeah. guess they're good if you cook them right. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good with all that. <laughs> I draw a line somewhere. <laughs> See, though, like, if we had been eating insects this whole time, you'd be like, a cow? I'm not going to eat a cow. What the fuck? No, I wouldn't like, be eating insects. Same insect. thing. No. Uh, no. You don't eat meat? No, I do sometimes. But um, I wouldn't be eating an insect. I don't care. Because oh, <laughs> no. I, I get it. There are different cultures that, that you know, eat it because it's a protein. And you know what? Good for you. I will send you that protein over there. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I, I, that's not. That's yeah. not for me. I know it's your lifestyle, but for cutting weight, how is? Have you had any issues with that, or experience before? So, oh yeah, I, I honestly, I love cutting weight. <laughs> you love cutting so, weight? Yeah, I'll get oh. down to like one thirty. <sighs> My last for uh, Jasmine, I was down to like one thirty four. So I'll cut. So I do, I'll do a meal plan that my buddy sent me back a while ago, and it's just, it's worked. It's simple. It's, like, what you're supposed to eat. It's, like, no bullshit. It's just, yeah. like, this, this, that, that. Three meals a day, good to go. Like, one snack. And I stop eating around 5 o'clock at night or 6 o'clock, depending on my training, because that's when, yeah. like, I'm, like, in the car eating, trying to get it all down. It's just, yeah. like, five food groups that I need to get down. Each meal is, like, five food groups. So I'm just, like shoving that down the whole time throughout training camp <laughs> a gallon of water every day and then it will be fight week pre-fight week so like on like f the fight will be on saturday so on like monday i'll do one gallon and tuesday one gallon and then thursday i forget which if, if it's two day one day i'll do two gallons and then i'll cut it down to one gallon again the next day and then a half a gallon the day before the cut, or yeah. I'm sorry, the day of the cut. Yeah. So I'll start cutting weight Friday. No, I don't want to. Thursday <laughs> night. Oh my goodness. I'll start cutting Thursday night, and weigh ins is Friday. So I'll cut like mm, six to eight pounds that night. And then the next morning, I'll cut like the same. So it will be before weigh ins, I'll, I'll make all my weight. So for Jasmine, I got to 134 and I had to get down to 125. And what I do is I go in the sauna, five minutes in, five minutes out, five minutes in, five minutes out. We'll do five rounds of five minutes in, five minutes out with sweet sweat and sauna suit uh, and sweatpants and sweatshirt over that. 
and then for the next five five minute rounds in and out we'll do nothing on besides like my sports bra and like my um i just wear like the puma under armor yeah boxers and we'll reapply the sweet sweat and then swipe it with a credit card and that i usually cut down quick a lot of some people don't like the sauna you know mm-hmm. they they're like skin heats up or some shit or like they feel like their head's getting too hot uh sorry for if the person <laughs> that says that is watching this <laughs> <laughs> um but i love it i love it but of course like the last like three pounds i'm like Ugh, yeah. i'm dying but for the most part, it puts me in, like, a zen state where I'm just, like, in a trance, and I just... Yeah. It's good. It's good. All right, so let me ask you this. When you're you're cutting weight, right, and you're doing your weigh-ins, um, and then you get me, right, and I got to be taking your pictures, uh-huh. how, how are you feeling? I'm, I'm, like I said, so, like, I've always loved putting on a show, and I did not have an outlet for it when I was a kid, so I was just like a pain in the ass. So as soon as I got this, I was able to be quiet in every other aspect in life and just focus. So when I get there to weigh-ins, like, I love it. I love the photos going. I love, you know, I love getting the crowd. I love putting on a show for the crowd. And it's, it's not like, it's the ticket sales. I don't give a fuck about the ticket sales. Yeah. I never do. I, I I don't like doing ticket sales. That stuff is annoying to me. Like <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, I'm here, I'm put on a show, I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna win, this is gonna be great. I'm like ticket sales, money, dollar signs. I'm like, I don't care. Like I wanna go to the top and then just get paid for it. I don't wanna even sell my tickets. Like I want people to know who I am and buy the tickets offline and you know, those people take care of it, you know. I wanna be there and do all the fighting yeah the showcasing i don't care about all the other stuff but that stuff i love that stuff no i don't hate that okay yeah as soon as like as soon as i'm going to get like my way in photos i'm like all right it's on, like, <laughs> it's on. <laughs> kylie thank you so much for your time um is there anything that you want to share with everybody um stay safe huh? <laughs> Uh, it's awesome for all the homies that are going in the UFC and doing this on their own. They're still working with the coaches here and there and some yeah. training partners, but definitely it's awesome. Hopefully I'm there soon. Hopefully this is over by then. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.